should know my name by now, so let's just get into it. We're still working on arrays. Let's get into the second problem of this series, duplicate zeros. All right, so let's just read the prompt here. Given a length array of integers, duplicate each occurrence of zero, shifting the remaining elements to the right. Note that elements beyond the length of the original array are not written. Do the above modifications to the input array in place. Do not return anything from your function. All right, that's cool. Let's get into the the first example of this, what's the first case that we need to consider? All right, for the first example, as you can see, we have a one here and we have zero, two, three, zero, four, five, zero. And of course the output is zero because we're not returning anything. Let's see an explanation of this because we're doing something in place. So in place typically means that we're using the array that's inputted and we're just doing an overriding of that array. All right, so here, after calling your functions, the input array is modified to this. You have where that zero is. For the first one, you have another zero right next to it. Then for the other occurrence, the second one, you see a duplicate zero right after the three. And then we also have the four towards the end because there was two duplicates. And towards the end of that array, for the first case, it was nothing to be shift after that point. All right, so let's get to a second example. All right, you got one, two, and three. Of course, there's no occurrence of zeros, so it should just return that input array as is. That's it. All right, so we have a length. The length can't be over 10,000, and the uh, values in the array is between zero and nine. How should we approach this? We know we're gonna have to iterate over this array. Not exactly sure at most. I would say the most we'll probably go to is at the very end. And then even so, if the zero is at the end, we don't want to do anything towards the end of that array. Hopefully the zero is at the beginning of the array and we can just shift it over to the right and not worry about the end zeros of the array. All right, so my first approach to this, I know I'm going to need a for loop for sure. So I'm going to just put some for loop text here. We know we're more likely going to have to loot through this whole entire thing. So let's set a condition to loot through the whole entire thing. So I'm going to set up a variable here where it says, let's just call it length, len, which is short for length. And then we're going to do a, the array length and return that to length. I think we're going to do something pretty fancy here. We're going to start working backwards because the whole thing shifting to the right sounds like a backwards type of thing. So I'm going to start backwards with this and see how it goes. And I'm making it less than one because more than likely it's just counting the one, two, three number of elements in there. So we have to do less than one in order to make it properly set up for the indexes. So we're going to do less than one and then I is greater than or equal to zero. And we also want to decrement that as well. All right, so we got that part so far. We're looking pretty fancy right now. Next, as we're looping through the element, we need to determine if we're seeing these zeros in this element. So we need to put a condition in there as we're looping through to say we hit a zero element in the array. So we're gonna do an if statement here. And then we're gonna set that if statement to if that array as we're looping through the indexes is equal to zero. So, so far looking so good, we know a condition in which the array is set to zero at that particular index. Now we need to figure out as it hits that particular index of that array, we need to shift all the elements of that array to the right so we can put a zero right after that zero pretty much. More likely we're gonna need another for loop for this one as well. So we're gonna do another for loop and we're gonna specify J as the element. All right, as we're shifting over to the right with this array, all the values, we're gonna make sure that we overwrite but not go out of bounds of that array. So we're gonna wanna specify in the first condition to make sure that we're not at the end of the array when we're shifting over. So I'm gonna put a condition at the if statement we first specify in the for loop to say I cannot be at the end of the array. Now in the second nested for loop we need to figure out how we can shift the array so we need to add some logic there. And of course, we don't want to shift the array past the out of bounds of that array because we're definitely going to get a 
array out of bound exception error. So in order to do that, we're gonna put an if statement here as well. And we're gonna say j is less than length. j, just like with i, should not be at the end of the array. And we wanna make sure it's less than that. All right. And I think for this last part, we don't even need to add the little curly brackets because it's just gonna be a one-liner algorithm. So we're gonna do array j plus one equal to array j. So pretty much with this logic, it's gonna shift the elements from the left to the right. If you can think of it like this, so as we're going backwards, we're gonna go to the j part and then we're gonna go to to the right part and give it that J part value. So after shifting those values to the right, we should add the zero right of that found zero in the index. Because after we loop through the J you know, index loop, now we're in the I index loop. We wanna insert a value just after that I that we just found, which is, was a zero. So we do a array I plus one equals zero. I think that's pretty much it. All right, so as we're going through the array, we're going from the back of it because it's much easier to shift the values right when we're and making sure that we're not overriding. Taking the previous value of the left to the right, we wanna make sure we stay within bound of that index because we're using an array in place without allocating additional arrays in order to insert the zero to the right of that index of that found zero. And that I plus one pretty much indicates that. So, all right, before we submit this, of course, we gotta get some B row in so run the b-roll all right so the time complexity of this particular problem is n squared the reason behind that is because the worst case scenario, we're gonna have to, for the first loop, go through each every single element of that array. And then for the second loop, if for some reason there's a zero at the very beginning of the array, we have to go through that as well to shift those values. For the space complexity, it is O of one is because we didn't allocate any arrays to store and we're not returning any values. So we're using the in-place array to overwrite the current array with the values that we want to set it as. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I plan on doing more in this series to explain what I did and hopefully that was clear. I did this pretty fast and I'm pretty much trying to up my production of my videos in the next couple of months and see how pretty much how that does for this channel and continue to grow this community of course. So you know subscribe to this channel if you thought this value was very helpful. Until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.